everyone. As you can see from the title, I'm doing a video all about casual teaching. The things I like, things I don't like so much, and any tips that I have learned over the last couple of terms. I do casual teaching on top of my part-time role at my school and I really, really enjoy it. And so I'll take you through some of my favorite things now. My favorite thing about casual teaching is that I get to see students I don't usually get to see. For example, I get to see students who I either taught last year and don't teach anymore, or students who are involved in our co-curricular program that I see in a different context usually. For example, I helped with the school musical a couple of months ago, and there were so many students involved, and as soon as the musical ended, I hardly saw any of those kids anymore, and I'd been spending hours with them every week. So when I see a name of a student from the show that's on my casual role, it's really nice to see how they're going. Another good thing about casual teaching is it's quite flexible. Because I'm only part-time at my school, I can take on as many extra periods as I want or as little as I want. So when it was report writing season, I didn't take on as many extras because I wanted that extra time to work on my reports. Especially as a first year teacher, I really needed that extra time. So being able to take a little bit more time off from class in order to get that stuff done and to keep my head above water was really, really helpful. Another good thing that sometimes is a double-edged sword is that you never know what you're gonna get. Every single class is different. You've got so many different personalities in the one room and you don't know how they're gonna react when they see you come into the classroom when they know that their teacher's not there. You have no idea whether you'll be able to actually just sit down and get some work done in their class or whether you're gonna have to be like monitoring the behavior like a hawk for the entire period. Most of the time, students are relatively happy to see a casual walk in because they think, yes, that means I'm not gonna do work the whole period, which is not the case. I guess why I enjoy it being different every single class is that usually it's just quite entertaining as a, a spectator almost. And seeing the lengths that students go to to try and get out of work is like actually really quite entertaining for me. On that note with students trying to get out of work, I'm going to go to the negatives and then I'll end with my tips. The first difficult thing about being a casual teacher is that assumption I just talked about. That when a casual teacher walks in, that assumption by students that they're not going to do any work that lesson. They're going to just be able to play games and pretend they're doing work for the whole period. And I'm sure with some casual teachers, that is the case and that is what they're going to do. However, I really value what the other teachers in my school think of me. And so when I take one of their classes, I want them to know that the boys will actually get their work done. If that comes at the expense of me not being able to get my personal work done during that period, that's okay because that's not what I'm there for. Depending on the class, sometimes you're just fighting against the tide the whole period, trying to keep people on track and on task. I've even had some situations where students are almost offended that you want them to do work. It can be a really difficult attitude to combat, especially when you can't help with the work they're doing because it's not your subject area. I unfortunately teach very little of music as a casual because music is only mandatory for year 7 and 8 in high school in New South Wales. There's a far higher chance of me getting a maths class or an English class or a history class. Another not so great thing about casual teaching is that students will test you. Obviously not all students, some kids will just get given the work, they'll do the work, they'll sit there quite happily and they're absolute legends. However, some kids will do anything they can to get out of work. One thing students do to get out of work is just talk to the casual teacher. I feel lots of casuals fall into this trap. Students know that if they're like asking you questions and showing or at least pretending that they care about your answers, they'll know that they can get out of work and they won't get in trouble for it. This is something to be really mindful of when you're a casual teacher. Don't go and be flattered that they're asking you questions or your opinion or your interests or what you do on the weekend. They're trying to get out of work, so don't fall for it. Another thing students will do to get out of work is pretend that like the work's not online if it's set on a like e-learning platform. They'll be like, oh, the work's not there, and then you'll go have a look and it's there and they're just lying. So always try and pick out the more reliable students to actually see if the work's there or not. Another thing they do is try and hide the fact that they're not doing their work. For example, students will like, like pretend they're typing or pretend they're concentrating or actually they're just playing a game. It happens with the best of kids and the worst of kids. They're gonna wanna get out doing work if they can. And the final not so great thing about casual teaching is it's not always reliable financially. There have been days where I've had my own classes period one and six and then had four periods in the middle of the day. 
and there have been no extra classes to give me because teachers aren't away and no one's sick, no one's busy. So financially, it's not the most ideal thing to have to rely on. But overall, there aren't that many negatives with casual teaching. It's just a bit draining because majority of the time you are going to have to be trying to stay on top of the kids and ensure they're doing the work more so than you'd have to do with your own classes. So I've got some tips for any casual teachers out there and I also have some suggestions for classroom teachers to keep in mind when you're planning for casual. My first and biggest most important tip is to be really tech savvy. I'm going to take you through a couple of things that I feel you really need to know in order to combat students doing the wrong thing and keeping them on task. So for students with a Mac computer, these are the things I think you need to know. Firstly, that they have multiple screens on their computer. Some students have like 12 screens. So all you need to know is take three fingers and you swipe on the trackpad left to right, depending on whatever screen they're on. And you can see what is open on their other screens. You can also press the button that looks like this. When you press that button, it'll open up all the windows that are open on that particular screen. And if you just move the mouse upwards when you press that button, you'll be able to see what's open on their other screens as well. Another option is to do Command Alt Escape, and that opens up the Task Manager, and you can see all the programs that are running on their computer. Usually, it's quite obvious if it's Minecraft or like a car game or Tetris, whatever's open their computer, you can just click on that and click Force Quit. The moment when you click Force Quit on a student's game is. One of the most satisfying things you can do as a casual teacher. It is so entertaining when a student hasn't saved their game and they're playing it in class because they thought they weren't going to do any work and then you destroy them and click force quit and they lose all their save progress. It's, it's a great moment. And I don't care if students hate me for this because it's really funny and they shouldn't have had it open in the first place. If your students have a Windows computer, you can just do Control alt delete and then click on the task manager and you'll be able to see all those programs they've got open and then click end task on it and you'll have that same satisfaction I just talked about. Regardless of what type of device your students have, if they're working on a browser, so they're working on Google Chrome or whatever, if you're concerned that a student might not be working, you can always just look up the top and see what other tabs are open. If you see this symbol, it means that sound is coming out of that tab and it might be more likely that the student was on that particular tab. Most of the time it's YouTube or Netflix or a game and so that's usually one of the tells to show you that they actually weren't on the tab they're pretending to be on. Also be mindful if you ask a student to close a tab and they just do a shortcut and it opens up a new screen. They've just opened up a new window, they haven't closed it, so you might need to keep prompting them, um, no, actually close it, thank you. My second tip for casual teachers is to use the photo roll system on whatever attendance program you're using. If you're in a class full of students you've never taught before, you don't know their names, students are going to feel more invisible and like they can get away with more because you don't know who they are. So you can catch them by surprise by calling out their names. So for instance, if a student is clearly gaming, like they're staring at their screen, they're not blinking and only one hand is on the keyboard, you can just look down the photo roll, see what their name is, call out their name and ask them to stop gaming and they'll be usually quite surprised that you know who they are and that you know that they're gaming. There are a couple of really obvious tells for you to be able to figure out if a student is doing the wrong thing on their computer. Most notably, not blinking, that's usually a pretty big tell. Often if they're concentrating on a game really hard, their blinks are more spread out so they don't miss anything. So always keep that in mind. Also, if students are looking at the screen of another student, that's usually a very obvious tell. Another one is seeing how their body language changes depending on what you do. I think most teachers have had that situation where they start walking towards a kid and all of a sudden their fingers move and they like snap out of it and start pretending they're working. If you suspect a kid is not doing the right thing, moving within their peripheral vision, their body language might change and they might start like doing the work. So maybe those are the kids you need to keep a closer eye on, maybe stand somewhat behind them so they know that you can watch what they're doing. Another tip is to bargain with students. I know that sounds really bad, but sometimes it's all you've got, really. For instance, if it's period six on a Friday, it is really difficult to get students to do their work with a casual teacher. It's hard enough to get them to do their work when it's your normal class on a period six on a Friday. So the main thing I bargain with is using headphones when they work. Some faculties at my school are very adamant that students aren't use headphones when they work, and so when I have a class in that faculty, 
they don't use it, that's fine. However, if I have a class in other faculties who don't mind as much, it is a great bargaining chip. Mostly how I approach it is I'll put a timer up on the board, say like 10 minutes or 20 minutes, depending on the age of the class and what I assume their self-control to be. And they need to work absolutely silently for 10, 15, 20 minutes. If someone speaks or if someone starts doing the wrong thing, we restart the timer. And when we finally get to the end of it, then they can use headphones. If it's a particular group of students who are making the timer reset, the rest of the class will be able to start using headphones when the timer runs out for them. And then the other students won't be able to use it for the rest of the lesson. I find the forced, like dead silence for that first 10, 15 minutes it's really helpful in ensuring kids actually just get a start on their work so that when they can start using headphones, they're more likely to actually just continue it and listen to music at the same time. However, it is really important to ensure that you're standing at the back of the classroom or pacing behind where the screens are so that you can ensure they're actually going to stay on task once they've got their headphones. Usually it's the other students who hold each other accountable for being quiet and they'll death stare or turn around really dramatically and look at a student if they're talking because they don't want the timer to be reset. Some classes, depending on their age, can take a really long time to get rid of a quite short timer. I've had classes where I've had a 10 minute timer and it has taken until 45 minutes through the class in order for them to completely get through 10 minutes of silence. My final tip is to tell students, whether it is true or not, that they have to submit or email their work to their teacher at the end of the lesson. This adds a level of accountability and gives almost every student a kick up the butt to get their work done. And that leads into my tip for teachers who have a casual coming in. I would highly recommend that you have students submit work at the end of the lesson. So if you use Google Classroom, get them to submit whatever they're doing as an assignment. You could also use the exit ticket feature from Google Forms, submit that, and so students have to answer a couple of questions for the end of the lesson so you can tell they've been on track. Another thing that would make the job easier for casual teachers, if you've got a casual coming in and you want your kids to get through the work, if you can avoid them being on a device, that takes away a huge distraction. And while I'm a huge advocate for meaningful use of technology in the classroom, if it's just on their laptops for the sake of it being on their laptops, the job is so much harder as a casual teacher. I think the main thing with casual teaching is you cannot be complacent. You have to be really vigilant if you want the students to actually get their work done. Casual teaching isn't about just being a babysitter who gets to do whatever they want in the same room as a bunch of students. After all, no one wants to be the casual teacher who is known for students not getting their work done in your class. And hopefully some of these tips will be able to help you in ensuring students get their work done. And that is all my thoughts on casual teaching. For any teachers watching, I hope some of these tips come in handy, whether it be in a casual class or not. I'd love to hear any thoughts or tips you've got about this topic. And if you do, please leave a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next one.